Give me the strength to stand for you when I don't want to hurt another for you. Open my mind to know your truth without doubt. Sing for you. The anointing of God is related to your calling, gifting, and function. Whatever God's called you to do, there's an anointing for it. If you're a musician, God's anointed you. If you're an artist, there's an anointing for that. If you're a teacher, there's an anointing for that. If you're a businessman, there's an anointing for that. If you're a software developer, good news, there's an anointing for that. Each one of us is anointed by the Holy Spirit, empowered, and you can grow in it. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. Thank you so much for following us on these uh, telecasts week after week. And uh, we trust that these programs that come your way are encouraging you, are, are bringing God's blessing and enriching into your life and in, in your walk with God. We are doing a very interesting study on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we are exploring the Bible, exploring Scripture uh, to gain insight on the anointing. And uh, just to help recap some of the things that we've covered in our earlier telecasts, the, we talked about the anointing and uh, ex defined it as the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit empowering an individual to do the work that God has called them to do, uh, to accomplish certain purposes, carry out God's works, uh, display the works of God. Uh, and then the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit displays the supernatural work of God. So there are things, of course, we can do in our natural uh, uh, strength and our ability as uh, human 
beings, uh, but the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit overrides or is, is above and beyond that uh, and ex therefore expresses the works of God through whatever we are called to do in life and uh, for the glory of God. Now, we uh, have covered certain ground in, in exploring on the anointing. We talked about the anointing as seen through the ministry of Jesus, how Jesus himself ministered under the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Or we talked about different measures and different levels of anointing. The same Holy Spirit, but he is operating or expressing himself in various ways and in various measures or levels or degrees of his power being expressed uh, through people. Just keep this thought in mind, and we'll get to it in a, in a telecast later, that we can actually grow in the anointing that's on our lives. That means uh, none of us have to stagnate or stay stuck uh, with the, uh, the level at which we are operating in the anointing of God. We can grow in it. We can see an increase of the measure of the anointing, which is an increase in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit so that greater works uh, can be uh, displayed through our lives in the areas that God has called us uh, to minister. Now, on the program today, as we continue exploring this subject of the anointing, I want to bring our attention to a, a few important aspects of uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, specifically these three things. One, is that the anointing is tangible. Second, the anointing is transmittable. And third, the anointing is transferable. So we will explain what each of these means and look at them from Scripture because we see these things happening in the Bible. Keep this in mind that the Holy Spirit has not changed over the Testaments. You know, sometimes people get upset when we quote from the Old Testament as though that is a part of the Bible we are not supposed to believe. Listen, God has not changed across the Testaments. God is still God. He says in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, I am God, I do not change. The Testaments have changed. The ways in which God is working in people's lives has changed. But who He is has not changed. And so oh, the Holy Spirit has not changed in His power, in His capabilities, in, in what He does. He is infinite. In fact, we must expect and be open for the Spirit of God to work in our day and in our time, in our scenarios, uh, in ways in, that we do not see recorded in the Bible. For instance, uh, take for example, you know, in the Bible, uh, in Bible times, people had to deal with agriculture, with animals, with livestock. That was their business and that was their work and the things they did. And so the Holy Spirit worked in that context in their lives and displayed the power of God in that context. Today, those of us living in urban centers, uh, we work with different things. We, you know, we uh, transact with uh, large sums of money. We build systems. We do all kinds of things. But the Holy Spirit is still at work in our lives and can work through our lives in our context. So He can display His power. He can display His presence and, in, and works uh, in our country, in whatever we are doing, whether you're working in some big corporate office, whether you're working with technology, whether we are working with art or uh, with science or whatever you're doing, in our day, in our context, the Spirit of God can manifest His work and His presence. So even though times have changed, God has not changed. He is still the great, big, mighty, unlimited, supernatural God. And His presence and power working through us will cause wonderful things to take place. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the anointing being tangible. Now, when we look at the ministry of Jesus, and we'll quote a few scriptures. In Mark 5, verse 30, we read about this woman with the issue of blood who touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out, out of him, turned around the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? So it says that Jesus knew in himself. That means there was something tangible. When we say the, tan it's, the, the anointing is tangible, that means it's recognizable to us. You know, you can sense it. You, can, you may feel it in your body. You may recognize it in some way. Uh, and here it says Jesus knew inside himself. He knew in himself something had happened. Power had gone out of him. The anointing had been tapped into. You know, that of course, there were many other people touching him physically. 
He was in a crowd. There were many people maybe you know, shaking hands with him, touching him, hugging him, uh, you know, bumping into him. All kinds of contacts was taking place with Jesus in the crowd. But there was this one contact that was different because something went out of him. He knew power went out of him. This contact was a contact with the anointing of God. So Jesus knew. So that's what we, ref, what we state as the anointing being tangible. When you are ministering under the anointing, you know the Holy Spirit is there. You know the presence of, of the Holy Spirit is there. You are recognizing, you are being aware of His presence with you. You are being aware of His power flowing out of you. In Luke the 8th chapter, verses 45 to 46, Jesus says, Somebody touched me. For I perceived the power going out from me. Let me see, perceive, this is a perception. So when you talk about it being tangible, it means that you can know, you can perceive. There's a perception that takes place, something that you recognize. The anointing is flowing through my life. So we must understand, the anointing is tangible. It's recognizable to us. Whether it could be recognizable uh, to our spirit, our spirit senses, the sensing of our spirit person. Are your inner man? You recognize the anointing in you, inside you. And there are times when the anointing is very tangible to our physical body or physical senses as well. Uh, and again, there is no complete list of uh, uh, ways in which the anointing is tangible. But let's just talk about some of the practical things, like things that we see experientially. For instance, uh, in your spirit, you can sense. Uh, Ezekiel talked about this in, 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 his, in, in Ezekiel. He felt heat in his spirit. He felt a hand coming upon him. He felt like a power be coming upon him. He felt like being lifted up in the spirit. He felt like being transported in the spirit. So all these things were happening to him in the spirit. So these were spirit senses that were recognizing what the spirit of God, what the Holy Spirit of God was doing. And so also when you're preaching, you're teaching, you're ministering, you're engaging, you can feel the hand of God. I'm talking about in your spirit. You feel the hand of God coming on you, empowering you to do something. Uh, you can recognize that the Holy Spirit is giving you information. The Holy Spirit is opening your eyes to see something, or your ears to hear something, or your heart to know something. That is recognizing, perceiving the uh, work of the Holy Spirit, the anointing. Now, it can be also tangible to our physical senses. It uh, may not always happen, but it does happen. People feel heat or they feel cold. They feel tingling. They feel a, a, a heavy weight coming on them that makes them feel so weak. They fall to the ground powerless or they fall flat on their face. They go down on their knees because they sense something powerful coming on them. Uh, they feel other kinds of things. They may feel things being broken off of their lives, weights being lifted and a heaviness being lifted. These are uh, perceptions in the natural, in, the, in, their, in their emotions and in the physical senses of the work of the Holy Spirit taking place uh, in them. So that's what we mean by saying the anointing is tangible. And the more we are open to this, the more we recognize this, the more we can respond to that. Why do we need to rec recognize the anointing? So that we respond correctly. You know, if somebody comes into your home, your living room, and their seat is there, uh, and you don't recognize them, then you're going to ignore them. You may walk away. You know, uh, they're there sitting. They want to have a conversation. They want to do something. Uh, but you don't recognize it. You go away. You ignore. You actually miss out on what was about to happen. So that's the reason why we must learn how to recognize, how to be sensitive to the anointing, to the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. Because when we recognize the anointing, we know what He wants, us, wants to do. We are very receptive. We are open. We say, well, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Yes, I receive what you're doing. I, I, I recognize what you're doing, so I receive of that. And we don't miss out on what the Spirit of God is bringing into our lives. So the anointing is tangible. We must learn how to recognize uh, the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we see that the anointing is transmittable. That means um, the anointing that is upon a person can be transmitted to uh, another person. It can go from one person to another uh, and, and cause a work to take place in the other person. It can be transmitted into a situation, uh, a scenario. So the power of the Holy Spirit can be transmitted, can be released and, and cause things to take place. 
So uh, in the same example that we were seeing in Mark 5 about the woman with the issue of blood, the anointing flowed out of Jesus and into the woman. It was transmitted. It's almost like electricity flowing from one point to the other. You turn on the switch and power flows in and something happens on the other side. A bulb comes on, a, a, a fan turns on, a, a device turns on. Why? Because the power that was available at one point was transmitted in and caused something to take place at the other end. In the same way here, the anointing that Jesus carried, uh, that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that was upon him was transmitted into this woman's body and caused healing to take place. We read in uh, Luke, the 16th chapter, verses 17 and 19, the same thing happened. It says that all people came with all kinds of conditions. They came with all kinds of diseases. People came who were demon-possessed, who had unclean spirits troubling them. And it says there in verse 19, the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. So what were they doing? They were connecting with Jesus. The anointing on his life was transmitted into them, and they were healed. Uh, evil spirits were del- set, uh, driven out. People were set free. All these things happened. The anointing from Jesus was transmitted uh, into the people. Now, in Scripture, we see that there are various ways in which this anointing is transmitted. Various ways by how uh, the power of God flows from one to the other. Of course, the ones that uh, the examples we've already seen uh, is of people touching. You know, people touched the hem of Jesus' garment. People touched Jesus, like we saw in Luke six nineteen. So, to the laying on of hands by a point of contact, the anointing can be transmitted to another person, and they can receive the work of the Holy Spirit. We see other examples in Acts 19, verses 11 and 12. It says, God worked unusual miracles through the hands of Paul. So the handkerchiefs or aprons were taken from him, and they were taken to people in other places where they were lying sick, diseased, tormented by evil spirits. And wherever these handkerchiefs were laid, those people were healed. Now, this is God doing that. This was not witchcraft. This was not some uh, make-believe thing. No, this was the Holy Spirit working through Paul in this manner. So the anointing was transmitted through objects as cloth, and it it, it effected a change in the lives of people. We see in scriptures other materials being used for the anointing. Oil is a common one that we see in both the Old and the New Testaments. When people anoint with oil, oil representing the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes uh, and and causes a work to take place. And uh, words that are spoken, words can be transmitted. So we see very often Jesus speaking a word, and the word carries uh, the anointing of God. Jesus said in John 6 and verse 63, he says, The words I speak, they are spirit, they are life. That means the words are transmitters. They become carriers of spirit and of life, uh, and they effect change on the other side. There are times when Jesus breathed on people, so breath can be used. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, this is just a short list, not necessarily a complete list. God is, uh, uh, can do anything. And so he can transmit his power from one end to the other through various main means. Uh, we've seen people, as we pray for them uh, over a live stream, uh, people get healed on the other side. So they are watching a uh, live stream, but they get healed. Uh, how does it work? We don't know, but the power of God is transmitted and they are healed. They, they, they are made whole and they send in their testimonies. Those of you watching our TV programs, you can be healed on the other side because the anointing can be transmitted to you even as we pray. The third thing we want to talk about before we close is that the anointing is transferable. That means the anointing that is on one person can now be put upon another person and they can begin to walk under that same anointing to do the same kind of works. So that's what we call as being transferable or you would use the word, more common word, as impartation. That means a person imparts to another person the grace, the anointing that's on their lives, so that they are able to walk in that same grace and anointing and do the similar works that they're called to do. We've referenced many examples. Uh, In the Bible, we see Moses and the 70 elders. We see Moses and Joshua. We see Elijah and Elisha. In all of these cases, the anointing of God was imparted or transferred from one individual to other individuals. And they carried a portion or a part of what the other person carried. And they were able to operate, do the works 
that the anointing empowered them to do uh, for the glory of God. Uh, or in the case of Elisha, we see him going higher than his predecessor. We see him going to a higher level of anointing, twice as much as carried by Elijah. I want to point to something very interesting in how the anointing is um, about the transfer of anointing uh, as in Elijah and John the Baptist. You know, usually we see anointings being transferred by people who are there in contact with each other. But in the case of Elijah and John the Baptist, they were hundreds of years apart. They had no physical contact. And yet the Bible tells us that John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. That means he carried what Elijah had or a part of that anointing. Now, of course, Elijah did many great wonders and miracles. And John the Baptist did not, at least on record in Scripture, he did not do any miracles. But the commonality of the expression, the anointing, was they turned the hearts of the people to God. So John the Baptist came to prepare a people for God and to turn their hearts back to God. And Elijah did the same thing. So that was the commonality, the work of God being expressed. But the point I want to bring our attention to is the anointing was transferred across hundreds of years, even though these people did not have any contact. Uh, Jesus recognized this in Matthew 17, 10 to 13, when he said, uh, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. And he says, Elijah has already come. And the disciples understood that he was talking about John the Baptist. So he's saying, you know, John the Baptist, he has already come. He, uh, Elijah has come in, the, in, in that John the Baptist already walked in that same anointing as Elijah. So the anointing can be transferred. Impartation can take place through contact. And even as God, and if God wills, and when God wills, it can be transferred across time and geography. The anointing can be imparted. Before we uh, get into a time of prayer, I just want to make a few, uh, share a few insights on how the anointing is imparted, because that's something all of us uh, uh, can avail ourselves of. That means uh, you can receive of the anointing, the grace that is on somebody else, and that, that, you want that anointing on your life. You can receive an impartation. But how does impartation happen? And here's some few insights that we see in Scripture. Uh, impartation happens sometimes uh, at God's direction. God told Moses to lay his hands on him and anoint Joshua. God told Elijah to go and find Elisha and cast his mantle on him. So it happens under God's direction. Some, uh, that's one way it happens. It also happens through association as you work together with somebody. So Eli uh, Joshua served Moses. Elisha served Elijah. So there was the association that, that took place. There was a, you know, they, they must have spent a lot of time together as they were serving Moses was, uh, Joshua was serving Moses. So through association, through serving under somebody, uh, anointing can be imparted. And also, there we also see the importance of desire. Uh, uh, we see especially in the case of uh, Elisha. He desired, there was a pull from his heart. He said, I want this. I desire for this. And I want twice as much. So desire is important when you want to receive an impartation. Uh, there is also the, the whole issue of honor. That is, when you honor the person, when you honor the uh, anointing being carried by the other person, then anointing is transferred. Whatever you honor, you will attract. That's a spiritual law. If you do not honor, it will not come to you. So when you honor the anointing that's on another person, and then you do these other things or try to associate with that person, draw off their teaching, draw off their life, uh, and uh, a desire for that, you will receive. Now, uh, it does, does not mean that you always have to go and live with that person. You can't do that, of course. But you can draw from their lives uh, through receiving their teaching, receiving their uh, studying through all of that uh, that God is releasing through their life. And through that you draw, and therefore you also receive an impartation of a portion of that grace and anointing that is on their lives. But ultimately remember this one thing, that everything we receive comes directly from God. Uh, John the Baptist said, a man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from God. So although God uses human vessels to impart into our lives, ultimately everything we have comes from God. So we have to grow in our own relationship with God in as much as we receive impartation through human vessels. We want to pray together. We've talked about the anointing being tangible, transmittable, transferable. And you on the other side, I want you to receive a touch of the God's anointing uh, right now. You know, I'm going to be praying from here. 
And everything we've said is not just theory, it's not just information. It's something we walk in, it's something we practice. And as I pray from here, I want you to expect the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to come on you, to touch you, and get ready to act on that anointing. That's very important. If you are sick, get ready to do something you've not been able to do for a long time. If you are sick and the doctors have written you off, get, expect to be well and to get up on your feet and to see your body healed. I'm going to pray from here. I believe the anointing will come to you. The presence of the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon your life where you are and you will receive God's touch. Receive by faith. Let's pray. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I release your anointing to those listening and watching. I speak the word of healing over them in the name of Jesus. By the authority of God and the anointing of my life and by the power of God's word, I break every yoke, every sickness, every disease off of their bodies. I command them to rise up whole. I command incurable diseases to be cured right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of affliction come out of their bodies. Every spirit of disease come out of their bodies. Every spirit of abnormality come out of their bodies. And I command wholeness to them. Every torment of their minds, fears, our suicidal tendencies, depressions, confusions, disturbances in the mind. I command all of that to depart in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be made whole. Father, thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. On the other side, you say, I receive it. Thank you for being with us on the program. Now, when God has done something on your end, send us your testimony. We'd love to hear from you to know what God has done as we've taken this few moments to pray together. We'll be looking for your email and we want to celebrate with you. Now, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, if you've never believed in who Jesus Christ is, I want you to know that Jesus said He is the way, the truth, and the life. You're looking for the truth, you're looking for the way, looking for the life. It's all in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life. You put your trust in Him and follow Him alone. Your life will change forever. I trust you will do that. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.